appreciate the choir. And uh, I'm thinking as I, as I uh, reflect back on my week, and I'm, I'm thinking about different things and praising God for, and I, I, I was thanking God this last week for the, uh, the, the choir practice that we have. Uh, it's, it's always a blessing. To me, that's a, it's a worship time for me as well as uh, 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 we, we have we have a great time, and um, the the Lord has uh, blessed us with some some good talent here at the church, and as well as uh, the desire that we have to to um, to follow the Lord. Well, we're in Joshua chapter two. I think the bulletin probably says the whole chapter, but I'm going to. Uh, uh, be a little bit kinder to you this morning, and uh, we're going to read the first 16 verses, which is still covering some territory, but it's, it, it covers the story, and, and you, you understand that, that uh, and, and we all know the story about Rahab and, and uh, the spies and how they sent the uh, spies over, uh, and you know, this is the, the second time they sent spies over. They sent the spies over uh, 40 years earlier. Uh, to spy out the land, and Joshua was in that crowd. And then they came back with a report, and they said, well, you know, we, uh, uh, the majority report was that we, we, we can't do it. We're, we're too small in number. We're too small in stature. They, these are giants. These are, uh, they're much stronger, bigger than we are. We can't do it. We just can't do it. We can't take the land that God had promised. And so because of their unbelief, they had to wait 40 years. And of course, um, we, we talked a lot about Joshua last week. This week, the, the focus is mainly on Rahab and uh, she being um, a, a prostitute, and yet God used her because she repented of that, changed, and, and God had used her in a great way. So Joshua chapter 2, starting at verse 1, it says, Now Joshua the son of Nun sent out two men from a K grove to spy secretly, saying, Go and view the land, especially Jericho. And we're going to talk about uh, crossing over the Jordan there and uh, right at Jericho. We're going to talk about that tonight in the video. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, so that they may come and search out all the country. And then the woman took the two men and hid them. And she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And it happened as the gate was being shut, when it was dark, that the men went out. And uh, where did the men uh, uh, went? I do not know. Pursue them quickly for you may overtake them. But she had actually brought them up to the roof and hidden them with the stalks of flax, which she had hidden in order on the roof. Then the men pursued them by the road to the Jordan, to the fords, and as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Now before they laid down, they came to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, for the terror that of you hath fallen out on us, and all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. But we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. Now, this happened 40 years earlier, okay? For you, when you came out of Egypt, and what you did uh, to the two kings of the Amorites, which was recent, uh, which were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, which you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted, neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because uh, of you, for the Lord your God. He is the God in heaven above and the earth beneath. And now, therefore, I beg you, swear by me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token and spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. So the men answered her, Our lives for years, if, uh, uh, if uh, none of you uh, tell this business of ours, it shall be when the Lord has given us the land, 
that we will deal kindly and truly with you. And she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the city wall, and that's quite significant. She dwelt on the wall, and she said to them, Get you the, to the mountain, lest they, the pursuers meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned, and afterward you may go your way. Quite an interesting story. A lot of action going on here, and uh, it intrigues us. Some people have uh, deep theological questions, and I promised everybody Wednesday night that we would have a lot of fun with this this morning. So let's look at uh, the Lord at this time. Our Father, we're grateful that we have a, a, such a great story in the Word of God, a, a, a great uh, event that happened. Lord, is a, a not only a went to look out uh, upon the land, which is quite significant, but Lord, also the fact that, God, you have made a promise, Lord, and not only to Rahab, and Rahab made promises to these people and these uh, uh, these Israelites made promises back to her uh, for her protection and for her family as well. And God, we, we understand that all of these things were done according to the word of the Lord and not according to the will of man. And Lord, we're thankful that we have, when we have the will of God uh, in, in our uh, corner, we can understand uh, that your promises are real. And we thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, we, we, we look at this story from several perspectives. Israel's new leader, Joshua, uh, sent these spies who himself had been a spy 40 years prior. And he, was quest he wasn't questioning the mission about uh, going over to the land, kind of like they did 40 years ago. Uh, he wasn't going to repeat uh, the uh, mistakes of history. But rather, uh, he was uh, working upon the fact of uh, God always uh, works in the area of information. And so he was gathering the information for the future conquest. And uh, we find that uh, uh, they were going to enter into the land by faith this time with Joshua as their leader. And they had to uh, transition to a different lifestyle a different location. We talked last week about how that these people, uh, they were living in the desert, in the wilderness, which they call it, uh, for 40 long years. Their shoes didn't wear out. Uh, uh, they were fed uh, with manna that fell from heaven. Every once in a while, God would feed them quail, uh, and uh, God would provide them water in a land that was desolate of water. And so God provided for these people for 40 years, and yet uh, we find that uh, uh, now it was time. It was time for change. It was time to, to pursue uh, the, the, the promised land that God had promised unto them. And we also uh, talked about the fact that we have to understand uh, that this is different than our day and time. Uh, this is not uh, talking about uh, pursuing uh, uh, maybe a, a piece of property or something like that. This is talking about the promises that Israel had were tied to them possessing the land. That was, uh, they had earthly promises. Uh, they possessed the land. Uh, that God blessed them there uh, with uh, leadership, with uh, uh, the, the means by which uh, they could uh, provide for themselves and the victories that they would need to overcome in the land. And so they had to prepare for warfare, which was completely different than they had ever experienced before. And so we find that this uh, particular chapter is not so much about Joshua, not so much about the Israelites. It kind of focuses on Rahab. It kind of gives us a, 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 a real good view of who she is, uh, how that God had changed her and used her in a great way. And she ends up in the what we call the Hall of Faith in the, in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, she, uh, she's in, in, mentioned there as well as in the book of James, I believe it is, uh, that uh, she's also mentioned about her faith and how that uh, it uh, played out to show her uh, uh, faith by her works that she did. And so as we understand 
of these things that God has prepared for his people, uh, we find that Rahab was very key. So let's consider this part of Israel's history in the context of the scriptures before us. And we, we begin to see that uh, many times we struggle with many things in our own lives. And um, uh, as was mentioned in the Sunday school class this morning, that the, the disciples in the New Testament that walked and talked with Jesus and saw him do the miracles, uh, they weren't super Christians. They were people just like we are. They had uh, doubts and struggles and problems and personalities and all of this to deal with. And so it is that uh, even Joshua, we look to him as a, as a great hero of faith. Rahab also was a hero of faith. And notice also that Rahab will also be part of the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is an amazing thing, uh, we, how we see that, that uh, first of all, that faith can be born in the most unpromising of circumstances. On the human level, we, we look at one thing and say, okay, uh, this particular person is not worthy to be honored, it's not worthy to be, uh, uh, could, couldn't possibly be used of God to, to do or anything or, or provide the spies with protection or anything like that, but God used this woman in a great, great way. And, and we would, we would uh, 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 really kind of look down on that today. We would, we would think, okay, if, if this person's going to uh, 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 do anything in faith, we, they, she really needs to prove herself. But uh, she was a prostitute. The Bible tells us very plainly. But also she had seen the light. She saw how the promises of God and the people of God had uh, uh, been blessed by the Lord, and so she believed in the Lord and uh, uh, understood that he was the God of, of, uh, of, of the universe. So <clears throat> faith can be bro uh, born, we find that, in, in the most unpromising of circumstances. And notice the witness that she had received. To understand why Rahab did what she did, we need to fast forward to verse number 9, uh, and we see that Rahab reveals her faith in verse 9. She says, I know that the Lord has given you the land, for the terror that has fallen on us, and all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. And so she's saying, this has had an effect upon all these people. They see what God has done, and now uh, they ha it has an effect. And so uh, we could just stop right there and say, in your life and in my life, could people stop and say, okay, I've seen God working in your life, and this has an effect upon me. I, I, I see that, and, and, and that's what she was saying. Uh, and says, uh, we, we heard how the Lord did these things. She didn't see the, the river uh, 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 I mean, the uh, uh, Jordan, I mean, the uh, Red Sea part. She didn't see that, but she heard about it, and she believed it. Uh, and uh, some so-called Bible scholars don't believe it today, but, but I, I think it's very obvious the, these things took place. And notice then, Rahab had heard something of the reports of the mighty works of God in Israel, and because of her profession, Rahab was uniquely situated to have been well in, informed of the events. Now, we noted, notice that she lived in the city wall. And if you know anything about your biblical history, you know that that's like living in the court uh, 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 square. That's like, that's like uh, uh, having an office right there across from the courthouse or in the courthouse. Amen. Uh, that's that's where all the business took place was in the city wall. If you had a if you had a dwelling place in the city wall, you were an important person. And so uh, uh, she was uh, even though she was a harlot, she you could say that she had the goods on everybody. Amen. She knew what was going on, and they knew what, what, that she knew. And uh, so uh, uh, that's the reason why the the. Uh, uh, a mayor, so, uh, so to speak, of the king of, of Jericho uh, came to her and said, listen, uh, we heard that, 
that you had a wind of all this going on. And so uh, he, uh, he began to question her about it. So we find that uh, 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 not only did she rehearse about the fact of what had happened 40 years earlier, but what had happened in, uh, of the t two Amorite kings most recently. And so uh, Rahab then had become convinced in her mind and in her heart that Israel's God was the true God. And the Paul, and Paul tells us in the New Testament in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now this might seem like an oversimplification, but understand uh, that uh, somebody said, well, what do you do if you're talking to someone and they don't really believe the word of God? Uh, is it going to do any good? Yes, give them the word of God anyway, amen? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and you begin to understand these things are true. This, uh, the word of God is, is very powerful. It, it's alive, and it will, it will germinate. It will, it will uh, create faith in people's lives as they receive it. And then in, in Hebrews 11, verse 31, it says, By faith the harlot Rahab... Notice that this uh, title, harlot, uh, follows her even throughout the New Testament scriptures, but it's not to uh, slam her, but it's a testimony to the grace of God in her life. It says, by faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. The book of James then also tells us in James chapter 2, verse 25, was not Rahab the harlot also justified? by works when we, she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Now, it might be a place here to where we could stop and just say something here. Uh, the fact that some people get all tied in knots theologically because Rahab lied to these that were pursuing the spies. She lied to them. And they, they, they try to uh, uh, do all kinds of theological gymnastics in their mind, in their heart. And they say, well, is it ever right to tell a lie? And all this, that, and the other. Well, you've got to understand the context and what was going on. And, and, uh, and that is the fact that this was uh, the promise of God to Israel. And Rahab had connected with that promise. And now they were pursuing uh, the enemies of God. And so, uh, yes, she told him a story. But let me tell you this. It's kind of like this. If, if somebody came to my house and they were going to rob me and they uh, found my wallet and they pulled out and said, well, all, all I've got in there is maybe a $5 bill, maybe a $20 bill, that's about it. If they ask me, well, is this all that you have? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to tell them the, the, the combination to the safe. Amen. I'm not going to say, no, no, I, I actually, my wife's got some money in her purse. Let me go dig it out for you, you know. I'm not going to do that, okay. And so that's basically the same kind of scenario, but of course on a completely different scale here. And so you understand what we're talking about here. It, it's, a, it's not saying it's okay to lie. It's saying uh, that in a particular situation, you would, you would just do what is the smart thing, what is the right thing, uh, uh, so to speak. And so this reminds us that no one is beyond God's saving power, the fact that Rahab was used of God. And notice what the Bible says even in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1. Behold. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. And so Rahab reminds us that nothing is impossible with God. God can take a crooked stick and draw a straight line. God can, God can do anything with anybody he wants to. And I might say this too. There are some things that bother us that don't necessarily bother God. Amen. <laughs> And vice versa. There might be some things that don't bother us that really bother God. And so you need to understand that. You need to be in tune with that. But, but uh, I mean, to, to tell you the honest truth, there's, there's some things that just really, uh, just really bothered me. And, and even to this day, there's some things that I struggle with. All oh, these things bother me. But listen, there's some things that don't bother God at all. He, 
he says, oh, okay, I, I, I've, got, I've got grace for that. I, I've got uh, an understanding of that. And so we, we have to be connected with God, his word, his spirit, and understand his purposes and his plans. And so uh, that leads us to the second point. Not only faith can be born in the most unpromising of circumstances, but faith always demands a decision. Now, God does this. Uh, notice in verses, uh, uh, verse 2, it says, And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, uh, Bring out the men who's come to you, who've entered into your house, for they have come to search out all the country. And so when the king orders you to bring out the spies, it's not really a request uh, Rahab put her own life on the line here. You have to understand that, especially in that culture, uh, that uh, uh, she couldn't just uh, uh, say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I'm choose not to say anything. I choose the fifth. <laughs> Amen. You can't, you can't plead the fifth in the Bible times. It, it doesn't work. It only works in the United States, and it really doesn't work here either uh, that much. Amen. But notice Rahab uh, 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 had learned about God and was determined to follow God whether uh, that decision might cost even her life. And so you have to see that in this story. It's not just the fact that she just kind of, you know, said, well, yeah, I'm just going to tell a little fib over here. I'm just going to uh, say, that, say that they went this way when they're really up on my rooftop under the flax uh, 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 stalks. And so uh, we find that uh, uh, she uh, repudiated her past. They say that when she put the red cord out and hung it so that the spies, uh, uh, the, the, when they did conquer the land and, and came and conquered Jericho, uh, that the, they would, it would be a sign. It's saying that she then was, was giving up that lifestyle. She was getting rid of that and uh, showing that that was no longer part of her person, uh, but it did identify her in that way. And so she repudiated her past for the sake of her faith in God. And then verse 4 says, Then the woman took uh, the two men and hid them. And uh, so she said, Yes, the men came to me, but they did not know. I did not know where they came from. Now, so here she's, she's saying that, and then... It's, she says, as, the, as it happened, the gate was being shut, and there they went. They, they went away, okay? So, uh, like I said, some people's theology gets all twisted here. They, can, they can't deal with that. But I, I think it, it's, it's just a practical matter. You can, you can see that very clearly. Now, Rahab not only had the spies, uh, hid the spies, but she misdirected the king's men, and she risked her life not only to save the spies, uh, and not just to, to talk and, and bargain with them about her own life, but it was to save others, her family. And so she was, she was quite concerned about her family as well. Now, a person's life will either demonstrate the reality or the lack of reality of their profession of faith. And so uh, we, we find that this, this is showing forth the fact that her faith was real, it was genuine. And then with the search party, the king on their way toward this, uh, the Jordan River to look for the Israelite spies, Rahab went up to the roof to, uh, of her house to speak with the spies. And so then that's where these series of promises begin to come about. And these promises were based upon the promise that God had uh, been making to Israel for years. And you, so you see, this is something she might not have understood all the ins and outs and all the history of Israel, and, and she might not have understood all that uh, God had in plan, but she did have uh, something in mind. She, she knew that uh, they would come to the land, they would conquer the land, and they would prevail uh, based upon the promises of God. She, she understood that in a nutshell, and uh, based upon that, then her promises were made. Now, I want to say this. As human beings, we sometimes make covenants and promises and things like that. 
and we might have a, a good uh, intentions, but the Bible isn't based upon intentions. It's based upon facts. It's based upon the things that are really uh, play out. You've heard me say a lot of times that uh, you, you take everything and run it out to its logical conclusion, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's theology, whether it's finances, whether, uh, 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 whether it's uh, your lifestyle. You, you can't continue. Uh, in my case, I can't continue to just eat chocolate chip cookies all the time and not have some consequences down the road. So I have to really, really fight that battle, watch that in my own life. And so what you do is everything that you say, everything that you do, everything that you think, everything that you believe, everything that you pray about, all of these things, you need to follow it through to its logical conclusion and see where it ends up. And so uh, that, that's, what, that's what we're seeing here. And so these promises that she made to the spies and that the spies made back to her were all based upon what God has said. Now, this, this is so key, so important. When we make promises to other people, commitments to others, then it should be based upon what God has already done, what God, based upon the word of God, and that's exactly what she did. So then, thirdly, faith demands demonstration. She, she demonstrated, she, 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 she told them uh, what, not only what she was going to do, but then uh, she followed through with that. And it must have been a severe test of her faith to convince her family later on which uh, happens very shortly then, uh, when, when, the, when they come to conquer uh, 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 Jericho, she convinced her family to all come and stay with her, saying, hey, we're going to be saved in this particular instance. It's kind of like Noah trying to convince everyone, hey, there's a flood coming, okay? And so uh, I'm sure the family had uh, some doubts about that, but uh, there must have been something in her language that, that, and in, in her life that convinced them otherwise. And, but on uh, the seventh day as they marched around Jericho, and we'll get to this in a little while, in, in a few weeks, about how they marched around Jericho and, and uh, uh, the, the walls fell. But uh, uh, the, her family, uh, her part was spared uh, during that time. And so that brings us to this, and that is faith is always rewarded. In Joshua 6.25, we did not uh, read that, but Joshua 6.25, we find that Rahab and all of her family were saved just as it was promised. And so uh, this is, this is uh, one of those uh, great things that we have the benefit of. As we look at and read the Word of God, we see where God said he would do something, and then God did it. And based upon that, we say, okay, God is always in the business of keeping his promises. I'm glad we sang that song this morning, Standing on the Promises. Amen? Oh, listen, that's an, that's an old, old song, but Standing on the Promises is, is, is exactly what Rahab did and the spies did. And they were all based upon what God had already set into motion. And so with that in our minds, we can think about, okay, what has God promised? And how that we can act upon God's promises in our own lives. It, it, it's, no, it's really no different. It's really no different. We, we have the, the benefit of God's word. We have the benefit of the Holy Spirit. We have the benefit of all these years of history of looking back on these things and charting and saying God has been real. And especially when it comes to Israel, we see that uh, even today. The fact that, that Israel even exists in this world in which we live, after all the attempts that's been made uh, to annihilate the Israelites uh, and to minimize them, in, in many, many ways, they're still God's co covenant promised people. 
and God is blessing them, using them, and, and will, will bring them back to himself eventually. And that's part, all part of God's plan. And so we can rejoice in that and understand uh, that God's promises are real this morning. His, his promise to us is that he would save us. Whosoever, the Bible says, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So God's grace is real enough. It, it's real enough to save Rahab. Of the heart of it, it's real enough to save us as well. Uh, uh, I, I never will forget a dear, dear man that uh, was in our, our cancer support group in, in uh, uh, Manville uh, uh, that uh, we, we had there. And, and he, he told me one time, he says, I, I've been too bad. I've been too bad and evil and wicked in my life for God to save me. And I said, oh, no. Oh, no. God, uh, God's grace is, is, is plenty plenty big enough to save you, strong enough to save you. And sure enough, uh, he got saved. His name was Al, Al Johnson's was his name. I, I remember his name now, Al. And I remember Al got saved. I baptized him, and then he died just a, a couple of months later. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm glad that one of these days we'll see Al Johnson in heaven because he trusted in the God that can save anyone. Even, even though he was wicked and bad in his life, uh, God's grace can be real in, in everyone's life. And his forgiveness reaches all people, all kinds of people. God came to save sinners, uh, and so we understand that. Let's all stand together with our heads bowed. Our Father, we're asking, Lord, that we may trust in you, and Lord, put everything at your feet this morning, and especially, Lord, our, our lives, our souls, we, that we may trust you to save us this morning, and then to uh, 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 direct in our lives, and we give you the praise in Christ's name, amen. What, uh, what number are we going to sing this morning? Number 305, I have decided to follow Jesus. 305, as we sing together. You feel free to respond in your heart to the Lord. And even publicly, if you'd like to come forward, we'll be glad to pray with you and show you from the Word of God how that you can be saved. I have decided to follow Jesus. You can do that based upon his promises this morning while we sing. decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Aren't you glad that when, once you make that decision, God then saved you. He, he, he doesn't say, okay, I'll save you now. you got to do this, 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 and this, and be good the rest of your life. No. His grace is real. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and His power then will keep you. And yes, it will change your life. The Bible says if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And Rahab was a good testimony of that as well. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. It's good to be in the Lord's house today and uh, getting back to normal, whatever normal is a little bit. Amen. <laughs> getting back to normal. And uh, I, I don't think we're going to have a meal or anything Wednesday night, but uh, it'll be good to just to come together in, in a business meeting Wednesday night. They're going to talk about some of the improvements that's been done to the buildings and uh, some that are yet to come as well. A lot of uh, good things happening. And uh, uh, so we, we uh, rejoice in, in what God is doing among us. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to reaching out in, to more and more people. We've got a lot of new people in our community <coughs> that we need to reach. Amen. So let's, let's uh, uh, be mindful of that, prayerful about that. And let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. I'm going to ask Brother Bob Fleming 
if he would, to dismiss us in prayer, please. Amen.